welcome. Better late than never. I am so sorry for the delay Technical here. Technical difficulties. Delay and not denied. We're going to be talking about the vision for V1 Women, which Come is on. the Free Women Collective. Yes, yes. And this is my digital connect group. So thank you for joining us tonight. If you're not in a connect group, you better join one. But we got the door wide open for you tonight, and we have a really special treat. But before we do that, as if you had, I don't know if you guys watched our stream earlier today, but we're back tonight. We're and back. What's up, Veronica? What's up, Sadie? What's yeah, up, Yeah, shout them out. Drop a comment. Let us know where you're watching and from. Pastor Mike, welcome what? to Girls Night How did in. I get invited to the Girls Night? I know. I, I feel like I shouldn't be here, but we're going to talk about vision yes. for Free Women Collective. Yes. And I have a vision, and you guys have been building it. We've you been. You gals. Gals. And it's been an I'm incredible offended. journey. So Allison's there. Man, <laughs> check it out. Christine, I see you. April. Melissa, what's going on? I can't see your comments, but I'm relying on Pastor Mike heavily to call out your names. Well, you know, you can pull them up on your phone if you oh, want. Oh, okay. If you want. Well, you know, they yell at me sometimes for doing that, but I am doing it. Hey, something that you guys can do that would help is I want you to share this with three women. And I know you all know three women that don't feel like they have community, three women that don't feel like they have real relationships. I know you know three women who feel isolated or, and I know you have three women that you you know that they have the wrong influence in their life. So I want you to share this with three women right now. Matter of fact, I think if you're watching on mobile, there's three little like dots in the upper right hand corner. You tap it, a mm -hmm. menu comes up, you hit oh. share, and then text it off to them and just be like, you need this, you need this word, you need to be here. Okay. Yeah, do that. And also, I want to shout out our incredible admins. Thank you guys so much for doing what you do. There is no one like you. We love you. Um, but we have a special treat tonight, which we're going to get into a little bit later. Pastor Jasenia from our Miami location. She if you don't powerful. know, you will know after this. Um, we are streaming her sermon from the Miami Free Women Night. So if you were like, Oh, I wish that I could have went there. Well, we're bringing it to you. So we get a chance to, yes, to all watch it. And I was wondering if maybe you would share a little bit about the 2024 yeah. vision for the women in this house. What can we expect? And what did you download to us that scared me to death, <laughs> scared me to life? Yeah, <laughs> no word curses over here. Deliverance community, calm down. <laughs> Okay, some some of you this might be weird because you're like, who is why is a man giving us the vision for a women's ministry? Yeah. But I serve as the founding lead pastor of V1 Church. Yes. And a spiritual father. Mm -hmm. And many of you have had pastors or you've had preachers in your life, but you've never had a spiritual father. So what is a spiritual father? You know, Paul said you have many teachers, but you only have one father in the faith. And what he was saying is that, hey, they're giving you information. Mm -hmm. But when you have a father, it's like you have your father's eye color. You have your, you know what I mean? Like on a genetic yeah. level, you have the DNA of your dad. If, now, if you look at Bella and Everly, they got my eyebrows. Let me, oh, let me just give it a close. Yeah, look at these eyebrows. So when you look at my daughters, it's, it's hilarious so to me. You, oh, is that a good thing? <laughs> yeah, I would love to have your eyebrows. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a transplant. I mean, I would wax them, but I would <laughs> love to have them. Yeah, to they start have those with. like Sicilian, like thick Italian eyebrows. Such a blessing. So, the, but the thing is, so that's how you know that that I'm their dad. There's no mistaking it because when you look at their face, yeah. you see me. And definitely not with Everly. Everly she for sure. She is your twin. So for in the sure. same way, what Paul, like the Apostle Paul, was saying, is he was saying, "Hey, I'm your father in the faith." In other words. I'm casting out demons, so you cast out demons. That's in our DNA. Yeah. I pray for the sick and they recover. You pray for the sick and they recover. That's in our DNA. So, you know, I, I can reason my faith and I can go theological or I can go demonstration of the power of God, but like, but you have that DNA. So you carry the DNA of your father in the faith. Now we all carry the DNA of our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. But what God does is that he gives us like physical men that we look to as fathers in the faith. And this is this revelation is missing in the kingdom. One of the things I love about Jenny Weaver 
is Jenny Weaver as an apostolic leader. She has core group and hubs all over the the U.S. and the world, but she will she will openly tell people, my father in the faith is Ryan Lestrange. Mm -hmm. My spiritual father is Ryan Lestrange. There's a whole section in the V1 or the movie that we made, you know, V1 and 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 uh, the Breakers, where she, where they're talking back to back. And I think that for many of you, you know, you need it. It's healthy to be able to say, hey, and just like Ryan Lestrange, he said, men are fallible. You know, we have our own faults, we have our own failures. And so, even though Jenny Weaver's of uh, Jenny Weaver's spiritual father is um, Ryan Lestrange. Ryan Lestrange himself says, yes, I'm, I'm incomplete, I'm imperfect, but this is my position. Hmm. And so in the same way, I, I'm offering myself as a father in the faith to all of you. And so if you call V1 Church your home, what I'm saying is, yes, I'm fallible. Yes, I have faults and failures, yes, but, but I want you to be proud to say, but you know what, despite his shortcomings, that's my dad in the faith. That's mm -hmm. my spiritual father. Just like Jenny Weaver is proud to say that Ryan Lestrange is her spiritual father. That's a normal thing. That's not a something that we use in a weird way. You know, just like Paul, you know, he didn't use that to manipulate. He didn't use that to um right. to give give mm -hmm. himself more influence. He just him what the reason why he had to say, you have many teachers, but you only have one father in the faith is what he was saying is like, hey, just like a dad, I my motive for you is good. Mm -hmm. My motive for you is pure. My motive for you is a matter of fact, as a father, I want to see you do more than me. You know, like like it, if I don't want Bella and Everly to have my life, I want them to have double my life. Mm -hmm. So when you're a father, you want your kids to have it better than you. So what Paul was saying was, you know, be, like some of these teachers, they don't, they actually don't want the best for you. He even called some of them out by name. Mm -hmm. Paul did that. And he yeah. said, they don't want what's best for you. But I'm a father. And what he was saying was, I want you to have double the, the life I have. So I just, for those of you who might be confused, like I thought I was coming to a free women collective <laughs> stream <laughs> and now i have this like bald-headed bearded man talking about i'm your dad with great eyebrows with great eyebrows but really what you have is a man saying hey i'm not perfect i make mistakes i'm i'm i fail mm -hmm. i'm not god but as an ambassador of the heavenly father would you allow me to lead you and i think that there's a lot of women that will go to women's ministries but not ever have a spiritual father. Mm, it's so true. There's a lot of women that yes. will go to conferences, women's conferences, but, and you know what it is? And I'm going to get real. I'm not going to go too deep on this because mm -hmm. we're going to go deeper at the conferences that we have coming up. Yep. But they've been hurt by men. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, there's a lot of women that have had alternative sexual experiences with other women because they're afraid of men, mm -hmm. because they were hurt by men. And there's a lot of people that like there's a lot of women that are hurting in this area where it's because they've been, they've they're scared of men. They've mm -hmm. been abused by men. They've been manipulated by men. They've been hurt by men. And so I think right now, one of the most powerful things that I can offer is my presence in this in the midst of a women's ministry. Yeah. And yeah. I know that's radical. Now, I'm not always going to be around. You know, look at this. Somebody in grid in the comment section right now said that's me exclamation mark. Um, I was LGTV, hmm. which I, you know, I'm saying it YouTube friendly, wow. but so like we are getting confirmations in the chat right now. So am I saying I'm God? No way. But I'm saying is men have to be an image bearer of our heavenly father. And when the more comfortable hmm. you get with that, just like Jenny, yeah. ha, Jenny Weaver had to get comfortable acknowledging Ryan Lestrange, mm -hmm. even though she had trauma and pain in her past, there's a power that flows through that. Yeah. One will put to flight a thousand, but two, 10,000. Yes. So I'm not going to go on and preach a whole thing tonight because it's not my night, yeah. but <laughs> I want to explain why I'm here. Right. Because right. you all need this and you don't need a, you don't need a perfect spiritual father because you have that in God. Right. But you do need also an imperfect earthly spiritual father that is an image bearer of God because there's healing in that. We're going to, mm -hmm. so, so here's the thing I'm going to be in Miami. Oh, yeah. Doing deep it's inner be healing. Amazing. 
doing deep inner healing and dealing with the root of these things. I'm not going to do every session, but I'm going to have at least one. Oh, we got you and, down. You know, uh, <laughs> no worries. And then, and then I am going to be in Indiana. Then I am going to be in the Northeast. So mm-hmm. I'm going to be there. And I made myself available because yep. you all need that. And this yes. year is going to be powerful. So let me give you the vision now, now that I've established that. Really quick, though, I just okay. want to say um, there are women's ministries out there that are constantly calling women to rise up, rise up, rise up, which I think is great. Yeah. But without that male leadership is can, can be dangerous, is dangerous. Yeah. And I'll just say that. And we're not afraid to be like this house, I'm not just out here doing whatever I want, saying whatever I want. Um, although I think you trust me enough where you you probably would let me do do a lot of the things that, you know, I might think of, but that's not our model. That's not how we roll. We really believe in male headship. And so even though, yeah, it's girls' night, but what I wanted to show is like, hey, this vision is coming from our pastor through our team. And we're not causing an uprising. Like, <laughs> um, so anyways, wow. before you share that, so I just want to... The way you could preach that is there's a difference between Esther's rising and Esther's uprising. Yes. Oh, okay. So that'll preach. That'll yeah, preach. That'll preach. Because like when there's strong male leadership present, present, they empower you. Right. They protect you. They endorse. They come alongside. They equip. And so it's, it's really like... There, this is why this is going to work. But they're also not afraid to correct you because there are times when that's necessary too. And um, I am on the other end of that often, you know, like if I get off course in vision or maybe I get off course in what God's called this church to do, you're not afraid to be like, all right, let's course correct. Let's get back yeah. on track. Like, you know, because truthfully, ladies, I would shrink our vision very quickly I am not, um, I'm like a loyal Tell team player. I am. I'm a loyal team player, but I'm not, I'm a visionary and I'm not a visionary all at the same time. I work really well with a visionary, but I like to myself, I'm just, you know, I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. So for ladies, we would have had one retreat and four events that were live stream. Pastor Mike was like, take that model throw it in the trash. <laughs> like that is not what that's not what's best for global. You know, I remember you challenging me and saying global's more important than this. It's more important than your like your idea. It, we've got to fight for the right thing. And so um I was really challenged. So I'm going to let you share well, what okay. God spoke. No, is in a good Look way. What I got by the way. I got a free women collective. I don't know what is this. Wow, we're like this is some product out, placement but not to the on max. purpose. Hey Sadie. So <laughs> so let me let me just say this. If you are watching from V1 Church Global Online, what I have felt is that the V1 women's um you know, mm-hmm. now listen, I've always been there with vision and all that, but there's sometimes where I'll take a step back, you know, cuz I'm For not sure. I don't control. I'm very like, "Hey, try try what's in your heart, try what God showed you." That's how I operate. But then when I get asked, like, hey, we, you're the father of the house. Like, what do you see? I said, okay, I'm going to tell you what I see. And what I saw was that if you're V1 Church online, you were watching, basically you were watching yeah. New York. Right. So it was a New York live stream that you were supposed to watch at home. And I said, I don't, that's not my vision. So here's the vision I'm going to give for all of our ladies. This, this goes to whether or not you're at the Long Island campus, New York City, Miami, Indiana. By the way, put what campus you're a part of in the yes. chat right now. Yes. But regardless, I said, we are going to create an online experience that's specifically for online and specifically for their living rooms. Mm-hmm. Because that's their sanctuary. That's their auditorium is their living room. And so I want to see living room revivals all around the world. Come I on. want to see women in their living room from our living room to their living room. Yeah. So that last stream that you guys saw when you were in my living room, that narrow was my gate women. Yeah. If narrow, they're wondering which one. Yeah. It the was narrow that gate one. women. And that was my way of saying, and by the way, there's not enough women on this right now. Like, yeah. I know we have more than 200 women Where you at, in ladies? our church, but we only have 190 of them. So that's <laughs> part of the vision is unity is missing. Mm. And we like right now, we need to think to ourselves, if we had 12,000 people for Easter and half of those are women, why don't we have 6,000 people on this live stream right yeah. now? Yeah. 6,000 women. So like even for these things, we got to we have to get. Oh, look, it just went up to 200. They're getting to work now. Come on. 
on. So we need to fight for unity. So, so we need to fight for unity. And the thing that I want you guys to do, you ladies, you girls to do is living room revivals, take over your living room, living room. So when we do live streams that are for V1 church online, like global online, the women, we want to take over our living rooms. We want you guys yep. to invite women to your living room, bring your flags, Come on. Br- bring your, wave those flags, move the furniture around. Put the put the the broadcast up real loud. Like when we do the worship, and it's from our living room to your living room and all around the world. So that needs to get better. Yes. Like and starting now. Yes. So the next time we do a living room broadcast, mm-hmm. I mean, that's we are gonna light it up. And I wanna see six thousand living rooms. Come on. Because that's how many women that we have a part of V1 Church. Yes. And and we cannot have one woman left behind. Yeah. We cannot yep. have one woman with an autistic child who feels like nobody understands mm-hmm. and they're in isolation. Right. We're coming up, man, it makes me want to cry. We're coming up into your living room. We can't have one single mom who got, who got divorced who feels like they're less than. Right. And, oh, God can't use me. No, girl, you could be preaching in our house. You could be prophesying in our house. God's got a ministry for you. You are not silenced. You are not like, there's something about that. Yeah. When, I, so oh, yeah, ahead. so no, but I'm just casting the vision. So one of them was, we are not going to have everybody watching a New York venue and that's the live stream. Mm-hmm. We are going to go from our living room to their living room. And when we do something online, it's living room revival. It's for online. It's for online. Our venue looks like your venue. Yep. Yes. You know, so that's number one. Yeah. And if you miss that first one, um, it is maybe one of our admins can share the last YouTube video in the chat that was specifically for global. Um, we talked about being a narrow gate yeah. woman and um, that phrase really resonated with our team. And I just want you guys to know your cries have been heard and there will be narrow gate merch. <laughs> <laughs> there will be narrow We're, gate merch. There will be narrow gate merch, okay? Come on. And I see so many ladies have just joined, and it's because if you just join now, I'm going to tell you what happened, why your friend shared this, because they don't want you to be alone, yeah. and they want you to be a part of the movement. Mm-hmm. Because this is a women's movement, and wherever there are true fathers, there is no failure. That's it. So you have me backing you. And listen, I just want to say this, and I don't want to preach my sermon, because I got a conference sermon that's going to Save set it. a lot of women free. But but preach a little. There are a lot of pastors that don't believe in women preachers. Mm-hmm. But Caitlin Wilson is in the chat right now, and I believe in women preachers. Come on, Kate. Like Julie Signorelli sitting across. Mary Duperval is in the chat. She's a a woman preacher. I believe in her. Yes. Like you guys, where there is a father, there is no failure. Where there's true fathers, there's no failure. Because I know that in Judges 4 and 5, that Deborah was a judge over Israel. So if a woman can be a judge over Israel, surely they can preach in the new covenant. You know what I mean? And I mean, I see Mariah in the chat. Mariah is um, our first online member. No, no. I'm going to go deeper than that. Go deeper. Mariah Mariah Mariah. rocked with me back in Calvary Temple days in South Chicago. When I tell the story of me getting called to preach at 15, Mariah was there for it. Come on. Now, granted, I think she was in diapers, but she was there. (laughs) We won't age yet. So some of us, we've been (laughs) rocking together for a lifetime, and and Mariah's a powerful woman. But here's my thing is I believe, you know, that in Romans 16.3, that Priscilla, I believe in Romans chapter 16, Mm -hmm. verse 7, that Junia, that these women were in apostolic positions. There is no lid in Come this on. house because I'm the leader and I remove the lid. That's it. And so, good. hey, listen, go go try to go to other churches and they'll tell you we believe in women, but they mean in the daycare. Or they believe they in, mean in the in the their coffee pastor's department. Wife. <laughs> or, or they, yeah, yeah. Or they believe yeah, their pastor's the wife. wife. I see um, Emily Ekonayaka in the in the chat. And yes, on, I do em. know how to say her name Ekonayaka. right because I married them. Yeah. And I, I love that. Shout out Dan. I think that's the, the first time I said it right. So. But, but Emily is an <laughs> entrepreneur. And, and um, you know, when you drink a cup of coffee on Sunday at our church, you're, you're, you received that through an entrepreneurial powerhouse named Emily Ekonayaka, yeah. who incubated the vision yep. to launch the coffee company of Wild House Coffee. Mm-hmm. 
um, because she wanted to empower women yep. in the caste system of, um, you know, Eastern countries that could never rise up. You know, so when you're drinking a cup of coffee at uh, at V1 Church at one of our physical campuses, you are literally partaking in something that Emily, you're, a woman served you that from, but not... Oh, mm-hmm. she makes the coffee. No, she made the business that makes the coffee because there's no lid. Yep. So th- this is what I'm saying. I'm getting fired up because I was just with my friend Lou Engel, and Lou Engel is gathering a million women at the mall in Washington. And, you know, I just preached with him. It was an incredibly powerful event. Reason why I bring that up is because Lou Engel's not a lid, he's a conduit. And there are other men that are hearing the call. Jeremiah Johnson and I did a broadcast on my YouTube channel that's went viral many times over because Jeremiah is a prophet that gets it, okay? So let me give a little bit more vision that we're going to go into something really powerful. But I'm here to cast vision because I feel like this is a turning yeah. point in Free Women Collective. Yeah. Because I see the, I see, this is what I see in the spirit. I'm seeing this right now, fresh. Mm. I see 6,000. And then 6,000 will turn into 12,000. Come on. And the reason why I say that is because there's something about like when I saw that we were able to have 12,000 people in services for Easter, I thought surely 6,000 of them can be in our women's ministry and and receive what God has. And I believe that 6,000 women will turn into 12,000 women. Mm. I believe that now stadium, now arena, I'm prophesying right now, and I need somebody to mark this down. That now arena will we will outgrow it. I'm prophesying. Come on. We have to believe for bigger. Now arena fits ten thousand people. I believe that if we if the women of this house will get behind the vision I'm casting tonight, that we will actually outgrow now arena for the breakers conference and Ooh. have to do it in Atlanta or somewhere yep. bigger. Yep. And then now arena will become just our women's conference. Come on. I believe that I believe, I it. believe it will turn into that. I believe and it. I believe that Mary Duperval will will be preaching. Yep. I, Caitlin yes. Wilson will be preaching. Yes. That Julie will be preaching. And I believe that now arena is where we're starting with the breakers, but that arena is marked for our women. But, I'm talking mm-hmm. only women. Yeah. I even had a vision as you were talking. You know, we have some dedicated yeah, admins prophesy. in here. Um, Kat, uh, we have, you know, Rachel's always adminning in there. We have LaShawn who's always in there. And I see them preaching in the comments every yeah. single week. Every Sunday I hop into our comment section on YouTube and I'm and I greet people and just, you know, tell, you know, just honoring them because they work so hard and I want to let them know like I see you. I, I'm rooting for you. I'm I I know you guys are serving and you're important. And I even have a vision of some of our global family who's going to rise up in power with the gift of preaching. And maybe that's something that you girls have desired to see, like, but you you just never had an opportunity because you've been, you know, online or maybe. And, and I'm just asking the Lord, like, God, open a door. Let's figure it out. Let's try to see like what gifting is there and stir it up. And so I want to encourage you, especially you admins, like, you know, get to one of these retreats in person and let's, you know, lay hands on you, pray for you, activate you, impart into you what all that God has, because um, this isn't just a stream. Can they sign up for the other conference dates yet? Uh, I think we're working. We had to do... They're not open yet. They're not open yet. Okay, that's fine. We had one final thing. But Miami is filled, but but we can open up more seats right now if we had to. We just released... I don't want to put you on a spot. No, no. We just released more seats, but I don't have that many left. Like People need to sign up. How do they sign up right now for Miami? Um, If the admins can put the link in the chat, if they go on V1 Church app or the website and hit events, it comes right up. It's like the first thing. Okay. So maybe the mm-hmm. v1.church link and yep. you guys can spam the chat with it. Yep. And maybe somebody needs to fly out to, you know what? I got a crazy story that happened with a V1 woman. So I went down for the precursor to the V1 Miami launch and I brought out, you know how I always have like a gangster wad of cash with me because I'm old school, you know, <laughs> you know, I have some? <laughs> no, <laughs> you, you got your hair done today. You already spent it. <laughs> you already spent it, I but did. I keep like cash. The dog on me got because, his hair done too. <laughs> yeah, <We had> a- <laughs> I keep cash on me all the time, and because I like to bless people, mm-hmm. I like to give a lot of cash away. And the Lord had told me in the we were in like a pre-launch meeting in Miami, and the Lord said this one specific woman like just give it all to her. 
And I think, it, I don't know, I don't remember how much it was. I won't speculate, but it was hundreds. And what here's what's crazy. The Lord told this, so she was a single mother. She might even be in the chat right now. She was a single mother, and the Lord told her, make a sacrifice and get down to Miami because I'm going to move you down. Because she was actually in our New York campus. She was going to move, and the Lord's like, I'm going to move you down to Miami. She had no idea even how she was going to get home. Mm -hmm. Like, no idea. Yeah. yeah. And I'm down there doing this meeting. We filled up this whole venue, and I'm casting vision for V1 Church, V1 Church. We're going to launch in Miami. And all of a sudden, yeah, people in the chat were saying, I was there. I remember this. And I just turned to this woman. Ooh, I feel the anointing. And I just dumped this money on her. Boom, here's this cash. And she just broke. And she was like, you have no idea what you just did. Like, I, I didn't even know how I was going to get home. I didn't know how I was going to work it out. So there are supernatural stories mm -hmm. where God opens the door, okay? And Mallory's in the chat, uh, who's a powerful woman. She says she's the most amazing teacher in V1 Kids. So she's it's like, incredible. That, you know, and, she and, is. But that's my thing. It's like she did something in faith. And the Lord honored her faith. But I can't tell you what the Lord's telling you to do. You got to obey. And I'm not promising everybody that somebody's going to throw, you know, $100 bills at you if yeah. you do it. But I will say when it is God and you know it's God. That's why even I, we were on the stream with Jenny Weaver today. And whenever we say when wherever we're going to go minister, you know, like if I say I'm going to do the Breakers Conference in Chicago, if you guys read the comments, they'll all say, come to Arizona, come to California, come to Texas. And sometimes it's like, no, you come to you come to Chicago mm -hmm. because that because we what happens is the glory cloud in the old covenant would move and you went to where the glory cloud was. You didn't tell the glory cloud where to go. Yeah. So I think right now it's like, hey, the Lord told me Chicago. That's the door that opened. Mm -hmm. Every stadium in, in America told me no, except for Chicago. So that's where the glory cloud's going to be, you yes. know, the new covenant version. Yes. Yes. And we're all going to Chicago. Yep. And you've got to find a way to get to Chicago. And I'll be between... I've seen people healed in the line oh, to get real? in w real quick. Because I, when, um, when I remember in the 90s, I went to a stadium event for a renowned healing ministry. And I, it marked me forever because I was in Chicago outside in the line before the event, and there were people coming out of wheelchairs and getting healed all around me, and they never even got touched or prayed for by anybody. Wow. But the power of God was so strong because the anointing was attracted to expectation. So, you know, get to Miami. Yeah. I see you guys spamming the chat with the link. Get to Miami for this women's conference. Get to Chicago for the Breakers yeah. conference. And I see Mims in the chat. Mims, love you. Miss you. Mims a warrior. Mims is a warrior. And she Powerful is... Powerful in the spirit. Uh, she's... Uh, and I, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of her situation, but I know she'll travel and minister with us. She's been at many of our revival events. There are times when I'm like, go into an event and I'll look out of the corner of my eye and I'll be like, Mims? <laughs> You're here. And um, she just, I, I, I mean, I don't want to speak for her, but she's just made a commitment to go after God with like everything she has. And in the journey, I'm sure God has done miraculous things in way of provision for her to, you know, meet the needs. I don't know. Y'all could hit her up on that, but um, I, it just inspires me so much. So when she's putting like the fire emojis and she's championing you, she's actually walking this like mission out. Yeah. So she's doing that. She is doing it. So to kind of give you guys the last part of the vision, so from now on, V1 Church Online is going to be from your living room to my living room. We're looking at, we want to fill 6,000 living rooms all around the world. Like that is a big vision. Like, and that's what we need to press for because that's every mother, every single mother, every divorced mother, every married mother that feels trapped. That's every, every mm -hmm. uh, infertile woman yeah. that can't be a biological mother who's struggling. That's every single woman. I mean, like 6,000, like there's something about that, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's every living room filling up. And then the other vision that I have is the reason why I told Julie, we're not going to just do one conference we're gonna do regional y'all i was i was having you do one yeah because julie you was just like hey Pastor we'll do Mike one conference for like a billion <laughs> <laughs> well julie was like you know we're just gonna do one conference and i said you're thinking too small i was thinking in my own strength i was like i know i can do one i know three is outside of what i'm able to physically do 
And you were like, and you I could said, do it. Why. You were building me and Joanna up. And I'm like, I don't think I can. And shout out Joanna <laughs> because she was open. And let me yeah. tell you why. I said, Julie, you could do one conference, but you can't do three. Mm -hmm. And that's the point. You're not going to do it. We're yep. going to activate the women of this house. Yes. And we're going to raise up leaders. Oh, and they're going to flow in their anointing. Sure. So guess what? I'm going to tell you guys right now. Jasenia is mm -hmm. powerful. Yes, yeah, she is. That woman, I mean, listen, she is powerful. And she has a voice. We're about to hear from her here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this word is dripping with oil. Like, it's going to blow your mind. And I don't even want to take too much time because I'm, like, anticipating. But let me just tell you, she's got it. Mm -hmm. And so here's the thing. As when I push Julie to say, okay, forget about one conference. We're going to do three, and we're going to do them regionally. That will require of you raising up voices because mm -hmm. I want to hear these mamas roar. I want to hear these women roar. I want to hear the single women roar. I want to hear the married women roar. I want to hear the women with children roar. I, I want to hear the roar of every season, every, every, every uh, situation. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what's going to happen. Guys, Michelle Hamstra is powerful. Oh, my goodness. Haley yes. Fleeman, powerful. powerful. Yes. When I go to V1 Indiana, the amount, this is what I'm telling you because I like secret shopper. Yeah. And I'm telling you, the people come to me and they say, I had one meeting with Haley Fleeman that changed my yes. entire life. Yes. She destroyed a stronghold. I, my mind's never been the same. Mm -hmm. So so the way that we're going to rise, and this is the vision, is that we are going to go regionally. So we have a women's conference in Miami. That's the first one. Where's yes. the second one? The second one is going to be in July, and that's going to be in Pennsylvania. So that is our New York regional Yeah, conference. it's in Pennsylvania, which means mm -hmm. we are going to draw a lot from Pennsylvania. I don't know what your capacity is, but... We I, can take 400. Okay, it's yeah. going to fill up fast because the last yes. the last two times I've ministered in Pennsylvania, I've drawn 4,000 people. No, I know. Don't mess and around. And I don't know if you guys have seen the, the video. <laughs> when the so link like, goes live, sign up. When the link go li goes yes. live, and not only is it 400... But it's 400 from New York City campus, Long Island, and New mm -hmm. Jersey campus, which is, right. shout out Letty, She's crushing it. She's crushing. Whole nother level. Crushing. So this is what I'm saying. It's going to fill up fast. Now, Pastor Mike, 400, are you crazy? No, no, hear me out. I want Gideon's army on the mm -hmm. front end because I can turn 400 into 4,000. But the thing is, I want the real 400. Come on. Like when we go to Miami, like, yeah, it ain't about, oh, we can get a thousand women. I want the real ones. I want, give me the real, the 200 diehards, the ones that are like, I'll jump through a wall. I'll run over. I'll do whatever I got to do. Mm -hmm. And so like these conferences are for impartation and they're intimate. That's why you yes. want to get a seat. Yes. The, and I told Julie, I said, we're going to do deep and wide. Yep. See, wide is when we get us to the 10,000 seater in now arena and it's only women. But the way that that's going to happen is we got to go deep. Yep. You need multiple days. Yes. You need a, you need to be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I've even had pastors reach and that's why you have to sign up for Miami quickly because I've had pastors been reaching out to me like I want to come to receive, like I want to be in the room. And, and we so, told them no. No. You <laughs> did not. We might be able to sneak some of those pastors in, but this ain't their church. No, I know. So that's why I'm like, y'all got to sign now. up. You got to sign up. But we got to go deep. Yes. So like the reason why the numbers are so small, but um, it is because we want to personally meet you. Right. We right. want to spend time with you. We want to pray for you. Like the message I'm preaching, the way I want to minister, it's it's literally going to be oh, we're in there. intimate. Yeah. Like this is impartation. This is like laying on of hand. These are so like we could have done one big one. And I was like, no, 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 break it up. Mm -hmm. and we didn't we'll even want to do a conference one. because we're like, we have breakers conference. We don't need another yeah, conference we're not where there's distance. For conferences. We yeah. want the, the intimacy good. of growing together as a church, locking arms, getting to know your campus pastor, getting to know the care pastors on your team. Yes. Um, you know, building strong relationships. You guys, the gossip, the strife, it's gotta go. We don't have time for that. Narrowgate women, we do not 
busybody ourselves in clamor and dissension. So we really have to come alongside each other. And this is an opportunity to grow, put aside the pettiness, get together, lock arms, because you know what? We've got souls to win. We've got yeah. families to win. We've got generational curses to break. Like it's time, ladies. It is I also want to give really quick before we go on. I saw Lyle in the chat and Lyle said, I'm coming to Miami. And wow. I'm like, you know, if you... I don't know if you know Lyle, but Lyle's not making any excuses around here. And she comes to Breakers. She comes to I like so many of the events that yeah. we do. She doesn't make any excuses. She just gets in there and goes after God. So Lyle, I'm giving you honor. I can't wait to see you in Miami. Come on. Yeah, that's it. And, that, and this is what it is. I want to tell you this. So I'm going to give you the last part of the vision. So we have, we have free women collective merch. But it's not about the the clothing. It's about what it represents. Hold on, I can drink out of this cup. When you talk about it. <laughs> it's it's and this is what this year is about. This is about graduation. Mm -hmm. The word over this year is graduation. Yep. So we're going to Miami. We're going to Pennsylvania, and then we're going to Northwest Indiana. There's three conferences, very limited seats. It's going to be three. There are three days each, three or four days, yep. give or take. Sunday's and it's a part of that. And Sunday's a part of it. And it's deep. It's about relationship. It's about getting to know each other. It's about praying with each other. These are not like these massive conferences where you get lost and nobody knows who you are. It's actually very intimate and deep because that's the vision for it. Total freedom, total healing, okay? And then, then what's going to begin to happen is we're uniting because the free women collective is it means free from everything that binds them. Mm -hmm. So that's what free women collective is. We it's women that are free from everything that binds them. So they're going to be representing the shirts, the sweater or whatever this Wait, this uh, sweat outfit thing is. Oh, you got stuff. I hope it's not dirty. Look at these cute, cute shoes. The slides. <laughs> now, is all that available now? Yeah, it's on the website. I ordered it. What website? Um, If you go to the V1 Church merch section on the app, it's all there. On the V1 mobile yeah, app? Yeah, and like, honest to God, I literally wore this today in real life, forgetting that we and were doing this. And then like, I'm like... I, it's funny. not a commercial, but it turned out to be one. But yes, I literally but, but was you wearing know what, it because I liked it. It's about like, it's like when you go, you know, I never really had a real high school experience, but in high school, it's like <laughs> you would all wear this, you know, you would wear your school colors and you mm -hmm. would represent and all that. I just feel like this year is graduation. It is. This year is we, the women are united. Mm -hmm. We're, I mean, like for real, we're dressing the same, they're dressing the same you know, like we're getting the merch, we're representing, there's something, but there's something about that of camaraderie because I feel like there's many of you women that have felt left out. You have felt mm. abandoned. You have felt isolated and you are not alone. And wow. that's why we need to represent. That's why we yeah. all need the sweat. What is this called? Active wear. Um, athleisure. 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 That's why we all need the mug, the, the slides. <laughs> and we need to be posting pictures about it to be like, this is my crew. Yep. Black, yellow, brown, yeah, I mean, like red, nice, mean, green, <laughs> white, white, whatever color you are, like we are united. That's like right. whatever age, young to old, Gen Z to boomers, we are united. That's like it. we're one. And I feel like there's so many women that have just never felt that way. Mm -hmm. And and so I don't want to preach too much. I know we're going to get into it, but the vision is that now. When you might be saying, well, what about the big conference? If we're going to do like three small ones, the big conference this year is the Breakers. Yep. And why is that a women's conference? Let me explain. Because I'm bringing in one of our best preachers, and she is going to throw down. Her name is Julie Signorelli. Oh, I was like, who are we bringing? <laughs> Thank you. you know, That's but, so kind. And I, but, and I thought, I'm down. like, who is it? <laughs> and you're going to throw down. Amen. And, and we are having, and that's a so women's section. So there are going to be whole sections. Yep. But I'm saying there are going to be whole sections of the Breakers Conference mm -hmm. that is, like literally is V1, or uh, Free Women Collective. Yes. And I'm going to tell you what, when there's 10,000 people in that aud audience, and then Julie says, if you want to join Free Women Collective, Mm-hmm. You, you all see, then what's going to happen the next time you meet in the living rooms and you see the live stream numbers? Come on. Do you all see what I'm doing here? Come on, man. Let's We're playing go. chess. We ain't playing checkers. 
You must be new around here. You must be new around the, here. How many women are going to come from step all up these to the different? Line. Yeah, step up to the line, boy, boy. <laughs> step up to the line. You think we're you? Step when I throw out that line. number six thousand living rooms, you think I don't know how to get there? Come on. But once we get to the the breakers conference and we say, okay, if you're a woman and you're isolated, mm-hmm. if you're a woman and you've been alone, if you're a woman and you haven't found your crew blah, 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 sign up right now. We represent Free Women Collective. And then when we set up V1 Free Women Collective merch drops all over the stadium. Come on. And we say, hey, after Julie's session, meet us at the uh, meet, meet us at the, the, the drop for the merch. And, me, and we want to meet you and we want to be your friend. And you got women congregating all over. Mm-hmm. I'm laughing because there's a lot of boy boy in the comments. Come on, boy B-O-I. boy. B-O-I. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, so so what I'm asking you guys to do is three things. Yeah. Because leaders make it simple. Three things, okay? So write this down. Number one is I want you to represent. What does represent mean? Represent means represent in the comment section, represent at church on Sundays, represent like, <laughs> represent means like, if this is your gang, this is your gang. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I know who a Latin king is in New York City because they yeah. represent. Mm-hmm. You know, you know their colors. So number one is represent. And like you have to make a commitment. Like right now, there's 250 people watching, but not 250 comments Mm. because there's people that need to represent. And you might be watching on your television, but represent means get loud. Okay. They're repping. They're repping. The second thing I'm asking you to do is I want you to recruit. Mm -hmm. So represent is number one. And then number two is recruit. How do I recruit, Pastor Mike? You meet a woman in at the grocery store, you're a free woman now. What does that mean? Oh, I'll show you. This is my gang. Yep. You're joining my gang. I'm recruiting you. Yep. So we have to represent that we have to recruit. And like if you when you do these streams, if you don't see one of your women in the chat, then you send the you mm-hmm. literally got to send the link. Yo, where are you at? Get out of cuz I'm telling you yeah. there are women right now drinking. Yes. There are, that go to our church. Yep. And it's and it's April 10th. It's like a Thursday night and they're literally drinking right now and they're saying nobody cares about me, nobody reached out to me. So recruit them. You got to go out and get them. Even people if you know somebody who doesn't have a church, doesn't have, well, let it, go and get them. Yep. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, somebody said narrow gate woman gang gang. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was my sister-in-law. <laughs> Your sister. That's so funny. <laughs> Narrow gay women gang gang. Okay. Um, but I got real. one more, but I'll keep going. Oh, go going. ahead, go ahead. No, because they're they're they got they're taking notes in here. Okay. Go ahead. So number one yes. is what? Represent. Represent. Yep. Like you have to get loud about it. Cut through the noise. Mm-hmm. Post on your socials. Some of you are like, I don't post on my socials. You you now you do. Now yep. you do. You're a poster. Yes. You're an influencer now. Every single one of you. So Number two, though, is recruit. Mm -hmm. And then number three, it's a fake out. Refresh. Okay. In other words, do it again. Do it again. Like recruit, represent, refresh. Like when you hit the refresh button, you're like reload. Yep. Do it again. And really there are... And the reason why I say that, though, is because you're going to be like, I'm tired of recruiting. Hit that refresh button. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of representing. Hit the refresh button. Like, I'm telling you, this is what it's going to take yep. because we have it. And let me just say this, and, I'm, I'm, and I see you guys lighting up the chat now, but the thing that I need to help you understand is most people don't have what we have. Mm-hmm. I just want to say this. I want to read a message to you guys that I just got from my, my admin. She said that her husband works in IT. He went to a school and set up a brand new computer system. And to test the system, he typed in worship in Google, the word worship. And the very first response was V1 worship mm. on Google. Wow. We, you have something, you have a pastor named Mike Signorelli that has no lid on women. That's a rarity. There's very few of us on the whole earth. And I can tell you that because even the pastors who pretend like they support women are lying just to get them to come to their church. Because <laughs> so when, when the rubber meets the road, mm-hmm. it's not real. Right. Because And I'll be like, yeah, show me your female prophets. Mm-hmm. Show me your female preachers. Show me your female pastors. And mm-hmm. they can't. Yeah. So you have no lid. 
But then the other thing that you have is you have V1 worship, charting singles. You have a movie that's out there representing V1, V1 church. You have all this infrastructure that can connect it all. And this is why I'll say it's so important. A lot of women's ministries only have the women's ministry component. But what you can do is you can actually live your life in such a way that your husband ends up coming into V1 church and we got V1 men, Mm -hmm. men of valor. So we have it all. It's all right there. That's why you represent and you recruit. And then when you're like, man, I'm tired of represent. I'm trying to recruit. You hit the refresh button. I'm doing, no, I have to recruit more. There's more women who don't know. There's more families that don't know. There's no, and then we do that. And I'm telling mm-hmm. you, that's the plan. And I will say, if you're wondering, like, what are the touch points for women, the women of our church? Well, every Monday we have a Bible study. We have in person free women groups at every single location. They do hangouts, paint nights. I don't even know. They do all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. Um. They have prayer nights. They have all kinds of programming that's happening every single month. There's also connect groups for women that are focused on soul care, different books, undercover, um, all kinds of groups there. Then we have um, our monthly streams where we show you another pa- uh, another pas- woman pastor in our church who's preaching. So you don't get to, you don't have to miss Pastor Jasenia's sermon, Pastor Michelle's sermon, Pastor Mary's sermon. You can see them all, which is so cool. We have a global women's stream that's happening every quarter. That's just for our global, um, our global women. And then every quarter we have a free event. So if you're like, oh man, the retreats cost money. Listen, we are so far in the hole on these retreats. We make zero dollars. And when I say zero, I mean negative dollars. It does not break even. It does not come close. So don't even come for me with that. We literally do it on faith. Joanna was like, can we buy gum? I was like, Joe, we're done. (laughs) We cannot buy gum. (laughs) We are done. Bring your own gum. Like bring your own prayer mints. Um, so it is not that kind of event for us and for our church. Um, but our women's nights that happen quarterly at our locations are completely free. So I don't want you to get hung up if you're like, oh, it's just not in the budget or whatever. Also, um, you know, I don't know, I guess let us know. And, you know, maybe somebody is willing to every every time we have something like that, different women step up and say, hey, I'm willing to sponsor one. I'm willing to sponsor two. Um, so there's definitely an option for that. I would say you know, like pay the registration fee and see what God can do with the rest. You know, I don't know. So, um, that's all I wanted to say. You know, it's not, well, you know what it comes down to. And I'm going to give you guys some wisdom. So my friend Jeremiah Johnson did a conference recently that I preached and, you know, uh, there was a, it was like a ticketed thing and he got a lot of hate online, right? Because people are like, how, you know, who can afford this nowadays, whatever. And here's the thing. Not everybody is supposed to go to mm-hmm. a conference, That's true. but it's about making an investment. Mm-hmm. And we want you to make a wise investment because you're worth it. You know, like getting your hair done could be a $150 deal. It's le- it's more than that. <laughs> I was being nice. I'm so you know? sorry. Like, yeah, for the ball headed person, <laughs> you know, but it's like you make that investment because you're like, you're worth it. And I think some yep. of this stuff, you just got to look at it. And this is my wisdom to you yep. is you, this is you investing in you. That's it. Like who said you can't go to Chicago? Who said you can't? Who said you're the kind of person who doesn't travel? Who says that? That's not your identity. Like who says you can't go to the bean and take some pictures in Chicago and hang out and do this and like stay for a day or two? Like you you can invest in yourself. You, That's sometimes it. we have to give ourselves permission. Yep. Because one thing I know about women is they take care of everybody else. Everybody else. But they don't take care of themselves. It's so and true. And you'll go, you'll run yourself ragged. I gotta get my kids this. I gotta give my kids this, blah, blah, blah. But you never, but what about you? Right. And and when when you're healthy, everything else is healthy. So it's like a lot of this stuff is in just invest in yourself. Yeah. I mean, this is your and if people were like, I can't believe you're da-da-da. It's like, yeah, I'm investing in me. And I will say Pennsylvania's in July, so you have some months to save. And Indiana's retreat is in September, so you have lots of time to so save right there. right before the conference, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep, yep. So, uh, you know, it's we want to see you. Yeah, so I just wanted to take some time and cast the vision 
and let you let you women know what's going down. And you're going to be hearing from some powerful voices. What happened now? Uh, Jose Gomez is in the comments and he says, my wife thinks she's going to Miami alone. I'm sneaking in, kids and all. And then I saw him post up here. I'm sneaking into the women's events. They're fire. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag invest in yourself. Yeah, Come on, Jose. Pastor Mike needs some company out there. Yeah, man. I, yeah, I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be out there. That's so funny. Well, we love you. I, and hopefully you feel the love. Yeah. You know, because that's what we do is we provide, I think it like we always say one house, many rooms, and we provide the room. So, you know, sometimes what makes you a good spiritual mom and a spiritual dad, because that's really what Julie and I are. It's not like, well, I got to sit down and, and I got to have coffee with my spiritual mom because the, there's some spiritual moms that are always available for coffee, but that coffee time never produces maturity. Mm -hmm. It never produces growth. It never produces breakthrough. It never produces healing. And so availability is not like always the greatest value. It's like, and so what, what happens is um, it's more about the health of the home they provide. Mm -hmm. So a spiritual mother and a spiritual father, you get to say, I have a healthy home. You know, like the where I live, the home that I live in is is a healthy home. And in this home, there's events and there's connect groups and all this, and there's mentorship that's happening like all throughout the week. And I see you doing it. And I think so that's mm -hmm. really what it's always like. Like for me, some days I'll be I'll be real with you. You know, it's it's hard shepherding. You know, being a pastor is one of the worst jobs ever. <laughs> It's and not easy. nobody sane <laughs> would ever want to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. Like it has to be a calling because it's not worth it. You know yeah. what I mean? People beat sure. you up. They lie on you. They chew you up and spit you out. Like it's, you know, that being a pastor is hard. And there's some days where I, I come and it's like, you know, like right now it's going to be nine o'clock at night. I haven't spent time with my kids today, mm -hmm. my, my biological kids, but I spent all day with my spiritual kids. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people don't understand. I spend more time with my spiritual kids than I do my biological kids. But the reason why I don't beat myself up and the reason why I don't feel guilty is because I think to myself, the kind of house that I provided, the home that I provided for Everly and Bella was a safe home and a healthy home. And because they were in my home, even though I don't get all the individual interactions that I want with Bella and Everly, the when you add up all of what they had living in my home, I can say they had the best home. Mm -hmm. They had a really good home. So I think for us, it's don't, you know, I don't want you guys to think like it's just about, oh, you know, so and so was always there to talk to me on the phone because there's a lot of people that they're talking on the phone all day, but it's not producing breakthrough. Mm -hmm. It's not producing maturity in the faith. They're not leveling up. Right. And so what I love about you, Julie, as a spiritual mother of our house is that you created a, a home. You created a place where, where in this environment, freedom happens all the time. Mm -hmm. In this environment, learning happens all the time. In this environment, maturity is happening. In this environment, activation is happening. In this environment, and I see you teaching every Monday night. Mm -hmm. And the comments are saying, just her intro on, the, on this chapter of the Bible blew my mind. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's, it's, being, it's being, you know, so the, the coffee time with them is happening. If mm -hmm. they show up with coffee, leaning in, leaning in. Yeah. So it's not that you're not providing intimate time with a camera up in your face that feels like a FaceTime. Mm -hmm. It's are they showing up with a coffee? Amen. You got your coffee. Yep. Are they showing up with theirs? Are they leaning in? Yeah. And so, Julie, you're doing a great job mm -hmm. mothering this house. Thank you. <laughs> and I want to affirm your leadership because I see what nobody else sees. Mm -hmm. I see the late night worship sessions when you don't know what else to do and you give it to God and the songs begin to come out. So when you ask our church to sing, when you ask our women to sing, it's because you've already sang. Mm -hmm. I see the Bible open and I see your notes and the highlights when you're saying, Lord, speak to me. I need your voice when no human's voice will do only the voice of your father. Mm -hmm. And then you come up to our church and you and you come into your Bible study and you come up to the church and then you begin to release that word. They don't know how much it cost. Mm -hmm. Making me cry. They don't know how much it cost <laughs> because there's a high price. Mm -hmm. There's a high, I see the integrity mm -hmm. and how much you love these women. There's women in the chat that the only reason why I know their name is because you say it to me. Mm -hmm. Mike, we're believing for this woman. 
and you're telling me their name. And I don't even know if you talk to them, but you know them because you see them, because you take it very seriously. And that's who we are as a church. Mm. That, and that's, that's, that's who we are. Amen. And so here's the thing. And, I, and I'll end on this because I feel the anointing that will switch into even more anointing anointed word is the devil hates unity mm-hmm. and will do anything to divide. And when the serpent went into the garden, he told Eve, God is lying to you while he was lying to Eve. So that's the narrative. It's always going to be flipped. Mm-hmm. The accuser is always going to say that that the other person's accusing. Mm-hmm. The manipulator later is always going to say the other person's manipulating. The liar is always going to say the other person's lying. That is how Satan showed up in the yeah. garden. So, and it was to, why, if I can divide Eve from God and Adam from Eve, it's always that's the separation. This is the wisdom I want to give you all. It's I want to separate humanity from God. And, and um, people from each other. So this is the thing I want to leave you guys on. This is an apostolic mandate that I'm throwing down is women. And I actually went viral by all the heresy hunters because they were so mad when I released that word that said, stomp with your heel, crush the devil with your... Now, of course, Genesis 3 is a messianic prophecy referring to Jesus sure. who would crush the head of the enemy. But these heresy hunters and the, 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 the discernment crowd and all of them, what they failed to acknowledge is that Jesus told us that we will tread on serpents. So, of course, Genesis 3 was about Jesus, but then Jesus said, hey, by the way, Mary Magdalene, I cast seven demons out of you, but you're going to be a demon slayer too. Mm -hmm. So my sermon still remains. Mm. The principle of what I said is doctrinally and biblically sound. No matter how, and and the spirit behind all those videos was that was towards me was to try to divide uh, the people from God and the people from each other. Because what happened when I gave that message about the heel, your heel will crush his head. And that was so offensive to the heresy hunters on the YouTube channels because the idea that Jesus would empower us, they don't want to believe that. Mm. They they think that Jesus is just going to do all the work and we're just going to step by and watch. And when I empowered women and I said, no, your heel is going to crush his head. Of course, it's the spirit of Jesus through the Holy Spirit through your heel, but he's still using your heel. Why did he why did the serpent go to the uh to why did the serpent go to Eve first? Mm-hmm. And so why do I want to say that? The last time I spoke at the V1 Women's Ministry, the V the Free Women Collective, my message went viral for all the right reasons. And then I got a whole wave of people that tried <laughs> to cancel me. And that is how that is how um that was the evidence of how scared the devil is of me empowering and you empowering and releasing mm. these women. Mm. So, hey, on behalf of all the theologians that from that reached out to me to say, no, Pastor Mike, you were accurate and you we know exactly what you meant and the principle of what you said is biblically sound, but also deeper than that. What I want to say is, what was the devil so intimidated by that Come that on. that the counter attack to that message was that strong? Well, let me tell you this, Pastor Mike. Narrow gate women were behind you four thousand percent. So we were we were we were with you, and no need to explain for us. I must be on the sanctified side of TikTok because I don't see none of it. I'm like I block haters. I don't see you know. I'm like if if you posting about it, I don't even see it. So. <laughs> Keep yes. on going, I guess. Well, and you know, um, what's funny for them is all the theologians did their own. I mean, they got my back. <laughs> I ended up never even having to defend myself. We're not going to anyway. A whole wave of theologians Whatever. actually said, no, he, he's right. <laughs> you guys are haters. But let me say this. Yeah. Why? Here's why I said it, Julie. Yeah. And then we're going to switch to this word. The reason why I said it is this, and this is very important. It's because the enemy doesn't want women empowered. That's right. And a hundred percent of the videos that were made against me were made by men. Think oh, about of it. Of course. Not one woman canceled me <laughs> over that sermon. It was only men because there's the spirit behind them is the spirit of that serpent that tried to divide. So this mm-hmm. is my last charge to you guys apostolically, to you girls, you women, is and this is coming from an apostolic voice in the kingdom. 
is the serpent is in our garden. I'm saying this with like the mm-hmm. serpent is in our garden of V1. Do not let that serpent divide you from humanity and you from God. Amen. Be the woman. This is part two of that message. You know what to do, ladies. Crush that serpent's head. Yep. And you know why you crush the head of the serpent with your heel? Is because the head is where the tongue is located. Mm-hmm. And you're telling that serpent, shut your mouth. You will not speak lies. And you know what? why else you crush the head with your heel? Because the head is where the eyes are. No more monitoring spirits. No more watching because with a monitoring spirit. I'm crushing your head. Mm. See, there's this thing. You know why you crush the head with your heel? Because that's where the ears are. No, no more listening. See, there's a difference between there's people listening in, there's people leaning in. Are you leaning in or are you listening in? The ones that are listening in, they got a, the spirit behind that, and it's not the Holy Spirit. But then the people leaning in, those are daughters. Daughters lean in. Orphans listen in. Come on, man. I'll Come preach on. a whole sermon off of this. Let's go. But but I want daughters the lean in. conference before the conference. Daughters lean in <laughs> and orphans listen in. But you have to, all the daughters of this house, the serpent is in our garden. Crush the serpent's head. And I'll do my part to do it too. So do you want to say anything <laughs> before? No, we well, all, the viewership went up. So I think I, praise that- God. <laughs> <laughs> the Heresy Hunters are like, okay, He's we're giving us more content. Up. They all have a response video. <laughs> but I ain't going to watch it. I don't see your stuff. Sorry. Um, but I will say, uh, Pastor Mike, we want to honor you. And people always ask, why do you call him Pastor Mike? Because there are certain settings where you're my husband and you're Mike. Boo kitty. <laughs> and then there are certain settings where you're my pastor. And I say it to remind myself and hold you in regard because I know whatever I honor in my life. God will use to bless my life. So but good. what I hold as familiar in my life, God can never use. Mm. So I do not hold you in a familiar spirit. I hold you in high regard as mm. my pastor. Mm. And I love you so much. And thank you for pushing me. And thank you for pushing. Like I was seeing Angel in the chat. Angel's on our free women team. And I'm like, you're pushing her into the next mm. level. You're pushing Joanna into the next level. You're pushing Letty into the next level. Mary Duperval into the next level. Like we're all going with you and we're behind you. And we're not trying to get up ahead of you. I'm not trying to, you know, as they say in my big fat Greek wedding, turn the neck. <laughs> not doing that. That's so um, we're behind you and we love you. Aww. Thank you for championing our women's ministry. Mm. I just felt like it was really important for you guys to hear the vision from Pastor Mike before we go into, you know, retreat city and all these things that are happening. Um, I wanted you to hear it from him. So thank you for being on mm. on Girls Night in. Yeah, I, it was an honor to be and we love, led yeah. into the girls' club. Yeah, and I think now we're going to hear from... So you yeah, there's set us a powerful up? word. So if you guys don't know Jasenia, and she's a powerful voice in Miami, she's a pastor of our house. I want you to... This might, for many of you, this might V1 be the first college time. Grad. She's a V1 college graduate. <laughs> she's a pastor of our house, and she's a powerful voice. And many of you, you've never heard her before. So this is going to be the very first time that you actually hear her minister and release a word. And I want you to keep this on. Keep it on in your television, your tablets. Just hang out. Like tonight's been a little bit longer, but also it's like there's more and more people who keep joining. So there's something happening tonight now. They're all going to go on Netflix. It's almost like we just need to hang out. Like there's something happening. So this word that you have that you're going to hear right now, it is going to bless you. It's going to change your life. And if you don't follow her, you need to follow her on Instagram. You need to get into her world. Like I'm getting ready to minister in Miami. We're co- it's coming mm-hmm. up. Someone tag her in the and yeah, we'll tag her. Yeah, so she's <laughs> I don't powerful. know her Instagram she's handle. She's powerful, and so I want you guys to check this word out. Lean in, shout her down. It's going to be super powerful. We're talking about identity. Amen. Identity. This is something I know everyone has struggled with. Who here has struggled with identity? Raise your hands. Amen. Amen. I am the first one to admit I've struggled with identity. Amen. Now, I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them, today we are walking out in new robes. Amen. Prophesy that over yourselves. Amen. Now, let's start off with reading in Luke 5, 36. 
He also told them, he meaning Jesus, no one tears a piece of a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new and the piece of the new will not match the old. Now, when Pastor Julie and Joanna, who um, helps lead the Free Women Collective, reached out and they said, you, you know, Pastor Mike has new vision for Free Women Collective this year, and he really wants to raise up each and every campus and global. I was like, great. So we're having an event. Yes. Cool. Who's, who are you sending? This is amazing. I'm so excited. The ladies have been expecting. Who are you going to send? Oh, we're not sending anyone. I said, what? I was like, what do you mean you're not sending one? And Pastor Julie's like, no, the heart of Pastor um, Mike is to raise up each campus pastor to raise up their own location. And I said, oh, my Lord. At that very moment, I felt like I was a little girl again. I wanted to run for the hills. Like, I was like, I've never done this in my life. I don't know how I mean, how to even begin. So... In that very moment, the Lord gave me Zechariah, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And he's like, why not you? And I feel like this is something we've, I've been saying a lot to a lot of women lately. Is like, why not you? Why not? If he can use a rock or a donkey, why can't he use us? Right? Amen. So, I'm sorry, guys. This is not working. So, Amen. It's only by his grace that I'm here. And trust me, if he can use me, he can use you. Okay? Because I am just a willing vessel to say, yes, amen. I'm here, Lord. If you can use anything, use me. So before I go any further, I do want to pray over the rest of this word. So we're going to pray, Lord, I thank you and I come before you humbly, Father. And I thank you for each and every single woman that you have brought here tonight, Father, for you know their hearts, Lord Jesus. You know what they need to hear. You know the healing that they're expecting. You know the miracle that they're expecting, Father God. But I pray, Father God, that they not leave the same from these doors tonight, Father God, that you are able, Father God, to heal every wound in their hearts, Father, as they surrender themselves to you, Lord. So, Father, if you can use anyone, use me, Father God. And we pray over this word now in your mighty name. Amen. So when the topic of identity came up, um, before 2024, I was really praying and I was like, okay, Lord, like what, what word do you have for this year? You know, I, he always gives us a word, right? He always gives us this one thing. And he was really talking to me through robes and garments throughout the Bible. And who here knows that the Bible depicts many stories of how the enemy will get you to lose your identity within, um, not so much, within just forgetting who you are in Christ, so whenever we think about robes, right, we think of Joseph, right, the robes, the king of dreams, Joseph, king of dreams. Um, so in Genesis 37, 3, 4, now Israel loved Joseph. Now God had changed, for those who don't know, God had changed Joseph's, I mean, Jacob's name into Israel. So this is why it says, now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his sons because he was the son of his old age and he made him a robe of many colors. So when Jacob gave Joseph this robe of many colors, this was a, a uh, this was a moment where um, Jacob gave Joseph the family um, birthright. Amen. And this is where I feel like it was a transferring of anointing. In 2 Kings 2, we see this with Elijah and Elijah, right? Elijah says, then he picked up Elijah's cloak and had fallen from him and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak and that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided right and to the left, and he crossed over. Now, earlier in that verse, you read that Elijah had asked Elijah, what is it that I can do for you before the Lord takes me? And he said, a double portion. So this was a confirmation to Elijah that he got double portion of Elijah's spirit. Amen. And Zechariah 3, 4. The angel said to those who were standing before him, take off his filthy clothes. Then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sins and I have put fine garments on you. 
See, robes and garments were signified as authority, righteousness, where people came from, and who they belonged to. Garments um, and mantles are spoken all throughout Scripture, just like the topic of identity. This is why the, the enemy attacks our identity the most. If you read from gener, um, Genesis all the way to Revelation, the topic of identity is where you can find it in each and every single book. Amen? And the enemy knows that a Christian who has no identity is a powerless Christian. And we won't be able to walk in that great commission. Amen? Amen. Identity tells others who you are whose you are, and where you stand. So there are two things that I've noticed when my walk within finding my identity in Christ, and they were titles and trauma. Amen? As women, we wear many titles, right, that the world gives us, right? Mothers, daughters, sisters. Some of us carry career titles, um, entrepreneur, teacher, counselor, um, director, uh, uh, entrepreneur, maid. As for me, you know, at home, I wear many, many hats. I wear maid, I wear, you know, (laughs) cook, chef. But the list goes on and on. So we've also learned that here. I want to let you guys know that titles do not define you. Those titles given to you within the world do not define you. And I am also here to tell you that those word Curses spoken over you are not who you are. See, growing up, I grew up severely introverted to the point when I was in school, I would not, if the teacher told me I had to present the the project in front of everyone, I was not presenting it. Even if it was worth my entire grade, I was taking the final grade. Needless to say, I got a few Fs, guys. It's okay. It's okay. I just took, I took it when I got home and I was like, I wasn't presenting it. I'm sorry, you know. But I, I just didn't want to speak in front of everyone. And then growing up, I was never taught how to deal with conflict or how to deal with my emotions. And now as I'm older and, you know, the Lord has really, like, healed me in that area, I was beginning to see that those were generational curses that my parents carried over onto me. I was seven years old and my parents were like, go figure it out. And I was weeping, not knowing how to even, like, tie my shoe properly. How am I going to figure out why I'm crying? Amen. But by the grace of God, I get to see that it wasn't them. It was those generational curses, right? So needless to say, that opened the door for me to have to rely on myself a lot for a lot of things. When I came up short, the enemy really used unworthiness and rejection to just open the door and flood my mind with unworthiness, rejection, the fear of man. And I couldn't, I was so crippled with anxiety that going into my youth, I had already worn garments of rejection, striving, fear of man, unworthiness. And everywhere I went, Um, everyone I I would meet, I would reject myself before someone else can reject me. I would say, I'm going to just stay in my corner because if someone else rejects me, I'm going to lose it. So I would reject those around me. Amen. I would push those that the Lord had even brought to my side because I thought I was the only one who understood what this felt like. And I thought I was the only one that, that was in pain at the moment. And in 2016 is where things really started to spiral Um, I had, my husband and I had suffered through a miscarriage and it was there that the unworthiness and rejection really got heavy. And if anyone here has suffered through a miscarriage, I want to tell you that Jesus can heal and bring birth to that womb again because he did it for us. So it was in 2016 after I had the miscarriage that I was feeling really unworthy. I can't even explain the emptiness you feel in a womb. But when the Lord came in, it was a few years like this. We were really struggling. I was spiraling. And then in 2020, who knows 2020? Amen. Amen. But in 2020 is where the Lord really shifted things for me. See, ladies, this whole time I was in church. I was in church three, three times a week. And still I was feeling rejection. I was feeling fear. I was feeling anxiety like never before. But ladies, I am here to tell you it's possible for you to be in church and still not have an identity in Christ. 
it's still possible for you to be in church and still not know your worth. Amen. The church does not change you. Being in the presence of the Lord is what changed you. Those words in the Bible, those, we need to apply those to be able to see the transformation in our lives. Amen. So 2020 is where I started to draw closer onto the Lord. I started to be at his feet more. I started to read those words of life. And they were giving me words of life. I would feel, and though I afterwards I did have my son after my miscarriage, I was starting to see the fruit as to why this all happened. I didn't understand it. But the Lord gave me something better. Amen. And he also gave me a promise that I will see that baby again. Amen. I am going to see my baby again in heaven. So if ladies, if you've struggled with that, understand that you will see that baby in heaven again. Amen. And in 2020, as I drew closer, as I got rooted and we came to V1, we found community, we found, you know, we found life in it. But he did take us through a healing journey. But I surrendered to the process. See, at first I was trying to wear all, I was trying to wear my new garments, like I'm reading the word, I'm praying, I'm on my knees, and I, oh yes, the Lord is just speaking. But I was trying to put my new garments and my old of unworthiness, rejection, fear of man, that I was putting up a wall. It was hard for me to trust when I first came to V1. Why? Because I still had all that. I tried to let my past failures and those word curses coexist with my new garments. I was trying to get engrafted more into the church, but I still felt unworthy. This is where I had to face my trauma. A lot of us here need to face our trauma. Amen. Amen. I had to face that trauma and I had to come to the end of myself and say no more. No more will the enemy have my voice. No more will I reject myself before anyone can reject me. And I am here to tell you, you are not your past failures. You are not those spoken word curses over you. You are not your divorce and you are not your career. You are not those titles. Amen. Do not ever let your circumstance dictate your worth. Because where you are today is not where you're going. Amen. Pastor Mike says it all the time. Take a picture of yourself. They said it on Wednesday. Take a picture because at the end of this year, you are not going to look the same. You are not going to be the same. See, some of you here tonight need to realize you're you're not a daughter by worth. There is absolutely nothing we can physically do on this earth to, to get his love. You are a daughter by birth. Amen. When you accepted Jesus, you became a daughter. You became a daughter of the Most High. Your highest calling in life is Him. Your your title is daughter of the one true King. John 19, 23 through 24. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robes, but it was seamless, woven in one piece, top to bottom. So they said, rather than tearing it, let's tear it apart and let's throw dice for it. Matthew 27, 51. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth shook. And the rock split. See, the Lord took me to these two verses. And I'm like, Lord, every breath on these pages, every dot, every iota was for a reason. So why would the, the, why, why would the Roman soldiers fight for his, like, why didn't they want to rip his garments? Because they understood that it was worth something. And what was the the curtain of the temple? That was separating us from the glory, right? That was separating us us from the, the presence of God. So what this told me is that this, that those two verses, what Jesus did, those garments, they were signifying adoption through the power of Jesus Christ's um, sacrifice. 
See, in the Roman Empire, the adopted child had the full privilege of a biological child and also was completely released from the control of his biological parent. Meaning, because of Jesus, we belong to the kingdom of God. Because of Jesus, we are now heirs to the throne. Amen? And through Jesus, we are made a royal priesthood. Now we can enter in. We are carriers of the glory, right? No longer do we have to wait for a priest to go in for us. We can sit at his feet and say, Jesus, take it. As we decrease, he increases. Amen? God doesn't love us because of what we do or who we are. He loves us because of who he is and what he has done. Amen? The, the key to all of this, the key to finding our foundation and our identity is the garment of his love. Amen? And if we can, lead, we can keep the garment of his love as a firm foundation, we can be as Romans 8, 14 through 16. For all of us who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by who we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. And if heirs of God, then followers of heir, then fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may be glorified with him. See, some of you have allowed fear to identify who you are. And some of us have even diverted to false comforts to determine our joy. Amen. A lot of us turn to the things of this world when Jesus is saying, come to me, come to me and I will clothe you in fine garments. Some of us keep trying to put scraps of rejection and fear and anxiety into the robes that he is trying to give us. Luke 5.36 said it. You cannot put the old with the new. Amen. It'll be torn. Stop trying to fit into a world you were not called to fit in. We were called to be set apart, consecrated, holy, and set apart unto the Lord. We were called to prepare the way of the Lord. And that is why the enemy attacks our identity the most. He won't, he, once you've already dealt with the, the false comforts and like, I don't longer need that. I don't longer, but he'll distract you with something else. It might be food. It might be, you know, a, a, a friendship, a toxic friendship. It might be a toxic relationship. He will distract us to keep us from finding our true identity. He will distract us from staying in the secret place. Amen. We need to stop trying to fit in into this world by fear of them rejecting us. Who cares? They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the one who sent you. Amen. There's no, there's nothing they can do. The sword of the spirit lives within us. We are carriers of the glory, his spirit. We are now temples of the Holy Spirit. God is trying to give you more and you are too worried about trying to put old pieces of you of, and st uh, with the person you are in Christ today. Stop rejecting the process. Walk through the valley. Do the hard thing. I had to go and do the hard things. I had to go into my past. I had to go into what I went through as a child to be able to find myself today in Christ. Do the hard thing. He is with you. He makes you lie down in green pastures. He has given you everything you need to live a godly life. Stop trying to reject those God has put in your path. Because I did that. There are specific people that have been trying to come close to you. And the rejection within you has said, no, I, I, I can't, I can't, I'm scared, I'm scared. Why are you scared? Why? 
If they hurt you, it's okay. You still have Jesus. He's everything. People will fail you. I will fail you. I am human. But he never will. Amen. We can triumph this identity crisis. Like I said earlier, through the garments of his love. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. If we could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but did not love others, I would only be a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secrets and possessions all and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith I could move mountains, but did not love others, I would be nothing. This is written. In 1 Corinthians, if I gave everything I had to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I did not love others, I would have gained nothing. Guys, the key, the key to our identity is love. Love, push past the pain, push past the, pro the trauma. Love the hard people that are hard to love. There's people out there that are hard to love. Amen. I, I'll admit it. I was hard to love at first because I had my walls. But we have to have the love of God for each and every single person. Because it's only through our love that God is going to be able to use us as a vessel to free the nations. Amen. There is only through His love that we are going to be able to push past this identity crisis that the enemy has just run rampant in each and every single one of our lives. As women, we carry all these burdens. We carry all this pain, this trauma, and we think we have to hold it all up. He's saying, just give it to me. Come to my feet. Just give it to me. Are you ready? Are you ready to give it to me? Because I'm here waiting. If we could solidify our love, we can be as in Revelation 19.7. And I want this for each and every single one of you. Let us rejoice and execute and give Him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and His bride has made herself ready. She is granted with her to close herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. And the angels said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. How do we get to know God's love, ladies? Sitting at His feet, surrendered. As we decrease, He increases. It's reading those words of life daily. It's gonna take for us to maybe walk away from an argument in the middle with our spouse. There were times where we'd be arguing and I'd say, I'm just gonna go pray. And sure enough, the Lord, the Holy Spirit will come and just calm everything down. We do not have to fight our battles, ladies. We do not have to let our coworkers know that they were wrong and they did this and that. No, all that bickering and the drama, there's no need for it. There's no need for it. That keeps us away from the glory. That keeps us from us walking in our true identity. Those are just barriers barriers to what God is trying to give us. We're so blinded by the rejection. We're so blinded by the fear. We're so blinded by the drama that we are saying, no, Lord, I can handle it myself. And he's just saying, I'm here. I am here. I'm ready to take this. I'm, I'm ready to take this from you. We need to tarry, ladies. We need to tarry in the secret place. We need to tarry in the word. We need to pray and tarry in prayer. It doesn't matter if you spend five minutes, spend those five minutes with the Lord. That's you tarrying in this season and that's okay. It doesn't have to look like hours and hours and hours and hours of prayer. You'll get there, I promise. But just give them five minutes of your time. 
and watch those garments just peel off. Those garments of iniquity just peel off layer by layer. Amen. This is where we receive his identity, by tearing in prayer, by tearing in the presence, by tearing through the hard things, amen? See, some of us need to tear some things off of our garments. It might be even people. And I feel in this room that at times, I feel it's people. There's some people that the Lord has said, they're not for you. They took you up to this season, but that's it. Pastor Mike was saying it earlier. The Lord is tearing people. They've carried us this far, but now the Lord is like, I'm ready to give you more, are you? Are you ready to let go of the things of this world? Are you ready to let go of your titles? Are you ready to let go of your career? Are you ready to let go of you, even your children? Children can be an idol. Children can be an idol. I know for me, my son was an idol because he had come after that pain that I was in. And the Lord showed me, give me, give him to me. I have more for him. And I said, all right, Lord, I didn't know he was, but here he is. And I wanna let you guys know that through the Lord's love, through tearing and doing the hard things, it's time to tear away. It's time to tear away of those false identities, those word curses. Go back into the secret place and ask the Holy Spirit, what are those word curses that are holding me down today from keeping me from walking in my identity? Because the Holy Spirit will reveal it. See, those filthy rags are not our portion. They no longer exist because we've accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. Tonight, we are tearing off our grave clothes and we are putting on the garment of righteousness. Tonight, we are walking in the freedom in Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight, we are walking in that promise the Lord has given us because we are ready to say, here we are, Lord. Here we are. I have nothing. He wants us to get us to get to the end of ourselves get to the end of yourself and let him clothe you with robes of beautiful garments and and colors he's saying here i see him here with garments just full ready to give them to you you will build that kingdom business you will be the lender and not the borrower you are the head and not the tail amen your identity is in him and him alone i want to give you some words that come straight from the bible of what he calls you he calls you worthy he calls you more precious than rubies he calls you a royal priesthood. He calls you the apple of his eye. He calls you redeemed and made new. He calls each and every single one of you chosen. He says you are forgiven. He says you are seated with him in heavenly places. He says, you are a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Stop trying to hide. It's time for us to come in right now. It's time for us to be that city on a hill that he calls us. We will not be hidden. We will not be silent. We will walk in that promise. And I want my prayer team to come up here because what we're gonna impart into these women is their graduation season. They're gonna walk in everything God has promised. As they leave and tear away those rags that they've been trying to put onto their new garments, Lord, you are gonna tear those away and they're gonna walk in the promise. They are gonna walk holy and sanctified. This is gonna be a year, ladies, a year of us consecrating ourselves onto the Lord. This is gonna be a year where we grow in the things of God. 
We are no longer going to be satisf satisfied with the lies of the enemy. No longer will the enemies have our ear because we're going to tarry in the secret place. We're going to tarry in prayer. We're going to tarry. We're going to have camel knees. Amen. I want camel knees. Come up here and get prayer. Whatever the Lord has been showing you that you need to leave and walk in your full identity, leave it in those chairs. Leave it in those chairs because He is ready. Stop trying to hide and put on your garments of righteousness. Put on your garments of salvation and put on your garments as the bride. The bride preparing the way of the Lord. Our voice is the voice in the wilderness crying out, Abba, Father. He's waiting for us, lady, and it's time. It's time to pick up those mantles that he's tried to give to your lineage before you, and they've rejected it. But you guys have been made for such a time as this. You all have been made for such a time as this. It is time for you guys to pick up those mantles and run. Run into the calling. Run into your purpose. Run. Run to his feet. He is ready. He's saying, just give it up. Let it go. Even if it costs us everything, we are ready to lay it. Even if it costs us losing friends, even if it costs us giving up specific things, it might be things within our home, it might be things we put idols, we put before him, whatever it is, he's saying, just give it to me, I have something so much better. When we learn to just give it up and let him take it. These garments, ladies, they're seamless, just as Jesus was. And it tells everyone around us that we are holy and sanctified and we are preparing the way of the Lord. Even if it costs us losing it all, we lose nothing because He is with us. We lose nothing because He is for us. And if He for us, who can be against us? Amen? These altars are open. And I want us to sing that out, ladies. Stand up, let's stand up and begin to worship Him. Even if it cost us, David says, I will not take that which cost me nothing. Nothing. And Dave, God said David was a man after his own heart. Let's get ready and prepare the way of the Lord. Wow. wow that was incredible. I have chills so all over. Man, our pastor's wife <gasps> chat was blown what? up. Um, pastor Jess, what a powerful word. If you guys don't know, I did see a couple comments. Where is this? Where is this event happening? It's going to stay, but but that sermon's going to stay up on our channel. It'll stay up on our channel, but that was a women's event that happened at our location at V1 Miami. So Pastor Jess <laughs> preaches all the time. So, so you what can you're saying is you're, that you're not the only PJ. No, I'm not the only there's PJ. There's Pastor Julie, Pastor Jess, Pastor, Pastor Jocelyn. Just Jocelyn. Yeah, there's PJs everywhere. Man. Yeah, but it was a powerful word. Y'all, can word. you just shout her out in the comment section? Just show her some love. Man, I mean, she tore it up. As we used to say back in church, you know, hillbilly times, mm -hmm. shuck the corn. She shucked yeah, the corn. Yeah, she shucked the corn. Um, But we were, it, what resonated so, um, it, so, so like yeah. poignant to me was, Basically, when she was talking about getting rid of the identities, mm. getting rid of the word curses that have been spoken over your life, getting rid of the grave clothes that have been 
um, that you've been living in and mm. exchanging those for the garments of praise, for the garments that Jesus has for you yeah. in a new identity. And I just saw so many women in the comments that were cry that they were saying, I'm crying. That's me. You know, um, I want to, even in our, in our pastor's wife chat, I'll, I'll put them on blast for just a hot second, but we were all saying, you know, pastor Mary had said, I want to come to the end of myself. And I was like, me too. I mean, these are the pastors of wow. our church that were being so challenged by this word. Um, but the thing that I love about Pastor Jasenia is, you know, Pastor Jocelyn had said something in our chat. She said, that's oil. Like that sermon cost her her whole life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so some people watch something like that and they're like, I could do that. And it's like, can you though? Because that sermon cost her like her whole yeah. life. Her whole life's work was leading up to that word, not for V1 Church, but just for her testimony and yeah. what God's done in her life. Well, she's a daughter of the house. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because even how she started the sermon, yeah, it was such a perfect transition. It was perfect. I was like, wow, we didn't plan that. <laughs> she was like, Pastor Mike's raising up like ministers and preachers in the house. And she just, I mean, that that message cost her her life. And those those are those sermons and I'm thinking about a sermon that Pastor Jocelyn preached. Mm. You know, I'm thinking yeah. there's like different key moments. There's a sermon that Pastor Mary preached mm -hmm. where I can think back and say those were legacy level sermons. Like those were their life mattered yeah. for that moment, for I, that message. I have a vision or I, I a vision stuck with me when we were in the revival after Domino revival movie. Um, we had opened up our church for many nights after the movie had aired and we were in revival. We were just seeing what the Lord had. And I remember seeing Pastor Exica preaching with fire and conviction. And she was she was uh like preaching on top Jumping of the chairs. The and I was like, oh my gosh, like people see that and they're like, oh, that's hype. It's like, no, that costs her her whole life. Yeah, you know what I'd love to do? We need to figure out is there a way to get some of those out of the archives? Like the Pastor Jocelyn sermon that I'm referencing, mm. like you I know just what I mean? shared it the other day Did on my you? Instagram. That's crazy. Yeah, and she actually DM'd me and she's like, people had said like they went back and watched it. Yeah, there's sent something her a about that, like a free women mm -hmm. collective playlist. Yeah. On YouTube. Yeah. Maybe we need, we to, need to like have a slumber party where we just yeah, do count all me out. the count yeah, me yeah, count out. you I'm out. Okay. You, but you got you girls. Your can eyebrows do it. are too good. You're not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're too thick. They're too thick to be in my presence. But maybe we'll maybe we'll yeah. have to do like I see on YouTube a free women collective like a playlist. playlist. Yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. But man, that word is just so you so know, here's good. the thing. That got me even more excited about going to Miami. For real. So and I'm gonna think hear we, Pastor just send you again. And I and I You're gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. Yes. And actually I told everybody it was Pastor Michelle's sermon, because for whatever reason, that's what I thought. And so I didn't know that Pastor Jasenia sermon was gonna time up with Miami. I'm sure our team thought about that because they're smarter than me. Um, so all day I've been like, Pastor Michelle, you know, and then I'm like, oh no, it's Pastor Jasenia equally as cool equally as anointed um but it timed up so perfectly because it did make me excited to go to miami and to get people connected to her and what yes. god is doing in her life because you have to remember the people you're under that's the impartation that you have that's why i don't try to get close to people who i don't want their life because i don't want their impartation if if they're you can't separate their no. life from their teaching mm -mm. Right. So true. So it's like yeah. they could be saying things that sound good. Yeah. But you, if you match up what they're saying with right. their life, it's like, but man, I'm receiving the information. Yeah. But their life would be the impartation. Right. But you always get the you impartation. always get the impartation. So it's like, yeah. I mean, yes. even churches that we were at where. You know, if the pastor got divorced, we would see divorce rip through the church. Oh, you know? for sure. If they were dealing with a substance abuse or addiction, you would see the people in the church just start struggling with addiction because, you know, and we talked about this in another video on my channel, like soul ties, the concept of it, mm -hmm. like when David and Jonathan covenanted to each other, it's like there are there is such thing as um, a, a godly soul tie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where God ca causes people to come together and they're hitched together. Yeah. But then there's also ungodly soul ties. Yes. And sometimes you can have that as well. So, but what, she's somebody whose impartation, like I want it in my I'm life. Like yes. when, I, when I look yes. at her faith in mm -hmm. Miami. Yes. Matter of fact, like something that 
Jeremiah Johnson, I sent them to a conference that he was at. Oh, this is crazy. Tell this story. I think maybe Cindy Jacobs was the one putting it on. I but it was know. like a prophetic conference in South Florida. And I got invited by um, Larry Sparks, actually, who, if you don't know, he's the Destiny Image like publisher. He, he leads that. And so, you know, he's constantly putting out kingdom resources and all that. And he was like, hey, Mike, I would love for you to come down to this event. And I'm like, I can't be there. But I have campus pastors for uh, V1 Miami that I would love to be at this event. So all of a sudden, and this is like so crazy to even think about about this happening, uh, Jeremiah Johnson, who doesn't know who they are, calls them up to the front. Oh, this is wild. And begins to like prophesy over them this whole prophetic word about the region and how they're going to be a conduit to other nations, yep. other regions. They don't now mind you, they, you know, he doesn't even know that they're connected to me at all. And then I just recently, I told him, I said, Hey, that couple that you prophesied over in South Florida, th those are our campus pastors. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what? And I, like, I refreshed his memory, but that's my point. It's just like, they get recognized in the spirit. That's it. And they get recognized and the, and because at home, they're godly parents. At yes. home, they're leading their family. They have faith for Miami, and that's who they are. Mm -hmm. So and it's they like, have breakthrough I, happening in their I'll church. I'll take an impartation yes. from Pastor Jasenia. Me too. <laughs> I'll take an impartation from Pastor Harvey. We'll take it. Y'all pray for us when we go down there. We'll take it. Um, but it was just such a powerful word. I saw a comment in there that said, let me get some eyebrows, Pastor. <laughs> let me borrow some yeah, we'll eyebrows. We'll have to do an eyebrow <laughs> tutorial. The, my I eyebrow tutorial so is just hard. like I sometimes I get these stragglers in between yeah. where it could be a unibrow, uh, and also, I just swipe this with a razor. Is that's probably you know like when you find out like how men take care of themselves and you're yeah. like and the, the women are horrified yeah. like what I'm hor a little horrified you do what don't do and that. you know you yeah. But I was also laughing because Trisha in the comments said, so many marriages happening at V1. I'm trying to catch that impartation. Girl, we're believing for you. Who, who's trying to be <laughs> Trisha, the Trisha, she's awesome. Yeah. Tr guys, what are you doing? I don't know. I guess the guys aren't watching. It's a girl's night in. But Yeah, they better know. That's yeah, weird. I'll have my eyeballs out. I, I, got, I got you. But it was just such a powerful word. And so right now, we're just going to close it out in prayer. Um, you want to kick us off, Pastor Mike, or you want me yeah, to pray? Yeah, I can close this out. Yeah, in close this out in sure. prayer. I was looking at the comment section here because it froze <laughs> up there, but this has been amazing. It you know, really has. So been. we're gonna we're gonna represent. Mm -hmm. We're gonna recruit. Yep. And then we're gonna hit the refresh, refresh button and do it again. Do it again. Represent, recruit. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Mm -hmm. You know, people hear me say that and they're like, I, "Why is he always saying that?" Did you? I know wasn't that? subscribed. Okay. okay, this is funny. I was not. My subscribed. whole life wasn't subscribed. The other thing too, when you look at the statistics and this, I just want to say this. This is why we ask. Yeah. Fifty. This is a real statistic because mm, you can look it up. Fifty-two percent of everybody who watches the V1 Church channel is not subscribed. Totally so that's why you got to say it. So represent, it. represent, hit the thumbs up. That thumbs up button sends this into more feeds. I've been following your channel for however many years that you have it. Was not subscribed <laughs> until like this year. <laughs> so everyone's like, why are you saying it? And I'm like, well, because 52% of people wife, are like my wife. Evie, Evie was the one that realized it. She's like, why aren't you subscribed to dad's Dude. channel? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I follow him in real life. I'm not <laughs> sure. So anyways, um, but, but thanks let's for pray. sticking around. I'm going to pray for y'all yeah. because the Lord's been moving this entire time. So Heavenly Father, I thank you in every living room and every kitchen all around the world, God, that your spirit is moving. And I just kept being reminded of that scripture today where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So Father, we thank you for freedom, for liberty in every single home, God, from everything that binds them. Lord, that they have a spiritual mother and a spiritual father. And Lord, we thank you for that, that they have a home that's safe, a home that's secure, a home where there's learning, there's breakthrough, there's deliverance, there's healing. They're learning the scriptures. There's a home where there's worship, a home where there's fellowship and recreation. And I don't know who this is for, but the Lord's mandate for you is fun. There's something, there's somebody that needs like you, yes, you learned warfare, but now you're going to learn fun because fun is also a weapon. There's something about that just 
fun, learning how to laugh again, learning how to play again. Some of you are going to put your guard down, and the Lord says, I'm going to cause you to come out of PTSD. You're coming out of fight or flight. You're not always going to be looking over your shoulder. You're not always going to be thinking that uh, something's wrong, and he's going to shift your body out of PTSD. And Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Amen. 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 All right. That's it. That's all we got. That's all we got. It's We're, late here. It's late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be live tomorrow. Maybe you'll mm-hmm. join us. Maybe. All we'll right. see. <laughs> Do you have any final words for these ladies? Um, No, we want to see you at the retreats. We want to see you in the connect groups. We want to see you at church on Sunday. Represent. So recruit, represent. Special refresh. shout out to our admins, LaShawn, Rachel. I probably won't get you all. I'm just going by who I see. Um, And I know I saw more in there. Melissa was on here. Rachel Kat was Asbury. on there. Rachel Asbury. I think I may have said her twice. Um, Hopefully I got everybody. But if I didn't, thank you so much. And we love y'all. From New York City. This is Mike and Julie Signorelli. Oh, we're doing the hard thing. And we are out. We love you.